Being burnt out doesn't really usually change the list of responsibilities, but it does change how we face them, how you go about completing them, and also how you relate to the people around you to get the help that you need. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the I Am Podcast. My name is Jazzy, and today we're going to be talking about burnout. I don't know about y'all, but these past few weeks, this past month has been kind of crazy. There's just been so much going on um, in my personal life, so much going on with school, so much going on with planning for the next term um, and work and extracurriculars and passions like creating. And your girl has been getting tired. And as I say, this platform is for me to share what I've been learning with y'all. We are growing together and on this journey together. So I've been a little bit burnt out. And today I just wanted to talk about what I've been learning through that, what being burnt out really is and how you can kind of move forward and keep moving while still experiencing burnout. Because the reality is just because you're burnt out doesn't mean you can't go to work anymore. Doesn't mean that you can't submit your assignments. If you have even more responsibilities like a family and all of that, it doesn't mean that you get to stop feeding people being burnt out doesn't really usually change the list of responsibilities, but it does change how we face them, how you go about completing them, and also how you relate to the people around you um, to get the help that you need in whatever it is that you are dealing with. So burnout, what is it? Burnout basically is when you have nothing left to give, or at least that's what it feels like. If you think of a candle as you light it and it is slowly burning out and the wick is slowly going down and down and down until there's nothing left and it's burnt out, that's burnout. And it is so easy to feel like that after going hard with all the responsibilities that we have. And even in seasons like where we're just maybe a little bit more tired, a little bit more sensitive, you can get burnt out from completing one task and whichever category it is that leads you to being burnt out, either way, still burn out at the end of the day. And it's unfortunate because like stated earlier, when you are burnt out, it's rarely at a time where you really get to take a break. Usually what ends up leading to burnout are the busiest times in your life, the most important times in your life, the times where it is do or die and you have to show up and you have to do well. And those tend to be the times that make us the most tired and the most exhausted and can lead to burnout. I know for me, burnout can kind of be accompanied with maybe sadness or disappointment in myself. And I think as someone who tends to be an overachiever or a perfectionist, it is really easy to have this unrealistic standard for myself. And when thinking about it and speaking to other people, you start to realize that we can hold a standard of perfection and strength for ourselves that God does not even hold over us. Like if God doesn't hold us to that standard, then why should we? He knows that we need help. That's why he's our strength. He knows that we'll mess up. That's why he's our savior. He knows that we are not really good at picking which way to go. And that's why he is our Lord. And so when we get into these moments of being burnt out, I think the first thing is not to see it as your own weakness or to hold it against yourself or to think that it makes you any less than because you got tired. Like I think having grace to understand this is a natural season to go through, a natural thing to experience and that is it. and that it is 100% okay to be in a state where you feel you can only do the bare minimum and can barely even do that. Like we don't want to get stuck there, but being there in and of itself is not is not a testament to you being less than or like less of a person. So that's number one, burnout. We cannot let it define who we are and can't hold it against ourselves. We're gonna get tired, especially in the busy, busy seasons of life. So secondly, I think whenever we get into these seasons where we do feel burnout, it can be really hard not to isolate and be by ourselves. Like we don't want other people to know that we're struggling. And sometimes other people just have to know that we're struggling and that is okay. And it honestly helps a lot because I found, at least for me, like when I share what I'm experiencing with other people, one, like people can be very empathetic and don't share with anyone, share with people you trust. Let's just put that out there, which you can't trust everybody. But when you do share, um, it's really nice to have people kind of just say, I understand how you're feeling 
Or, wow, you do have a lot on your plate. I understand why you would feel that way. Is there anything I can do to help you? Or you're doing a great job. It's okay to be tired. Like hearing those words is actually really like healing. And I think sometimes with burnout, the lie is that you're not strong enough to do what needs to be done. And when you hear people kind of supporting you through that, you realize, oh, I am strong enough. I'm just tired right now. And that helps begin the path to like getting out of that ditch of burnout per se but definitely talk to people about what you're feeling about what you're going through about what you're dealing with um, and take the time to like reflect sit down journal just think through like what have I been adding to my plate what's been stressing me out what's been draining me um, and allow yourself to just kind of sit and think with that even if it's like 10-15 minutes but I know it'll be really valuable and helpful when you are dealing with burnout and with burnout i think the next thing to kind of work on getting through it is to rest as much as you can as we said like burnout when there's nothing left to give so as much as you can like pull back a little bit if you know like i said you have bigger responsibilities like actually providing for other people um, maybe see if, you know, someone else can pick up the kids from school or if someone else can make dinner. Try to be more open to asking for help. And of course, like if that help is not available, keep pushing through and keep pushing through and just knowing and remembering that the feelings will pass. But be open to asking for help. It's not a sign of weakness. Like I said, it's OK to ask for help. See if anyone can kind of help to just lighten the burden, lighten the load a little bit so that way you can actually relax. And when I say relax, I mean like take long naps. Like I had one day where I didn't have work and I had like one class and I slept. I slept until class started and after class, I slept for the rest of the day. And yes, I didn't have that much time to study because of doing that, but it just helped so much. And so really just take time to like do nothing. Um, if you need to like sit and just be sad, like sometimes that is okay to do. Let yourself be sad. Let yourself feel drained. Just let yourself experience whatever it is that you're feeling. Again, like if you know you're really sensitive to that and can get in a really dark place, try to like do that wisely um, but there is a healthy balance of experiencing you don't have to try to get yourself to be in a really happy position every time that you're tired because that's just not practical so like I said rest um, do less just do what's required so my laundry has still not been folded for a long time um, because I just I can't do it right now I'm gonna do it soon because I'm feeling better now but <laughs> There's just some things where like you, sometimes you just have to do less. It reminds me of I had one of my friends. She posted on her Instagram story just generally asking people like, how do y'all get everything done? How do you keep all of your priorities in order? And it reminded me of this video I'd watched where this woman, she was this like mom, entrepreneur, super successful. And she basically said like, if y'all see one area of my life is thriving, another area is lacking in some sense. So it's like, you know, if the kids are doing really well, my career, I might not be paying as much attention to, vice versa. Like they're just always, like nothing is always perfect. And I think similarly, um, when we're burnt out, like our like paying attention to what you need in that moment is going to be highest priority. And some other things are just not going to end up being as important because if you have nothing left to give, you have nothing left to give. And that means that it is time to refresh, recharge all of those things. And lastly, with burnout, something that's really important is to observe how you were during it, like what brought you to that point of being burnt out. What were the signs that you were getting burnt out? What were the activities that like were the cherry on top that really stressed you out that led to that burnout? Because then you can understand your capacity. Like I think it helps to kind of re like instead of going all the way to burnout and then crashing, like to be able to kind of go up, be like, oh, I see burnout coming over the top of the mountain and slow down then. And then, you know, kind of trying to avoid the crash as much as we can, because there are going to be seasons in life where 
you don't have the choice to stop and the crash is inevitable. Um, but I think on the day to day, you know, as maybe you're only taking care of yourself, things like that, you can kind of learn to avoid that crash of burnout a little bit better. Um, and it also just helps to know what you need to know how much you can handle. So that way, when people are even asking you to do things, you actually know if you have the capacity to say yes or no. Like you can think through your list of things to do and be like, oh no, I can't do that right now. And I had to do that yesterday. I got like a email about an internship and it would have been a great opportunity, but I realized I was like, I can't do that right now. Like I literally physically cannot do that right now. And so I said, no. And you know, that was a little bit difficult, <laughs> but you realize that like capacity is so important. There are rarely any situations like mathematically, scientifically, business-wise, like rarely anything where, where people will put something into motion when there isn't capacity for it. They're not gonna send somebody to the moon when the rocket doesn't have the capacity to hold like the energy needed. Someone's not gonna take out a loan, a business loan, when their business doesn't have the capacity or at least the potential capacity to be able to pay that money back without insane interest rates. Like there's always a need for capacity. And so similarly, like why would we not take the time to understand our own capacity? So that way as you're moving throughout your life and just the things that you're doing, you can actually make smart decisions. And of course, don't treat yourself like a business because you're not an object, you're a person. But, you know, context helps. Know yourself better, know what you need, and it'll really help in the future. I'm learning that myself and learning how to balance all of the things that you have to do better um, and not to overwork yourself, not to always be burnt out, but to steadily be disciplined, be diligent, and just to get things done in a healthy way. But yeah, y'all, I hope that this video was helpful. Be proud of yourself for all of the things that you are accomplishing, the things that you are doing, the purpose that you are carrying out in your life. Burnout is natural. It happens to everyone. Don't hold it against yourself. It is not a bad thing at all all but it happens and i hope that this video helped you learn some new tools to help you navigate it as you experience it because like i said it's a natural part of life but if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to like this video and if you learned anything new or if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comments down below i post video podcasts on youtube and audio podcasts on all podcast listening platforms every single friday so make sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss any of those but thank you all so much for watching and i will see you next time bye